Hello and welcome. Today I'm talking about water. I've been thinking a lot recently about random factoids that you hear, things like eight glasses a day or one and a half litres or whatever they may be. And as always and ever, I think it's so important to ask why. Where do these figures come from? Who decided it? Is it a research paper? Is it an expert? Who are these experts? And so I've decided to try and discover these things and take you all along with me, if that's okay. So hopefully at the end of it, we'll have some kind of definitive idea of what we should be doing. We'll know exactly where we stand on how much water we should be drinking. That'd be great. I'd love that. Right, okay, so number one fact. Eight glasses a day, right? Uh, well, no, because it depends on a number of things, frankly. One, do you actually know what size of glass that means? Is it me? Do you know? I don't know. When they say eight glasses, what does that mean? I don't know. So that's number one thing, already flawed. Also, the climate affects how much water you need, how much exercise you do, you get water through food. There's loads of other ways. So that's the first thing, out. Also, it turns out that not everybody needs the same amount of water. There's not a one rule fits all. So it's affected by your weight, uh, how much exercise you do or don't do. It's affected by the food you eat. If you eat a lot of food, which has a lot of water in it, vegetables and fruits and things, then you get quite a lot of water from that. Climate can affect it, all sorts of things. So there's no one given rule. Right, basic anatomy is that we are about two thirds water. It's so important. Blood is mostly water, most of your cells are water, all your major organs in your brain all need lots of water to survive. It's the way that your body temperature is regulated, it's the way that nutrients travel to the organs and tissues, it's the way that oxygen goes to the cells. There's loads and loads of ways that water is so vital and integral to the way your body works. However, we lose a lot of water through breathing, sweat and bodily functions. A normal adult loses three to five pints a day. Um, caffeine, alcohol, those sort of diuretics all contribute to that loss also. Athletes can lose up to three pints an hour during their activities. Hmm. I don't know if that applies to swimmers though. Better pop Becky Adlington a note through. Because if it is true, it's just another reason to avoid public swimming baths, if you ask me, along with other people's we and verrucas. Anywho, I digress. The point is, you need to replace the water. Our bodies can survive without some nutrients for months, but we can only live for three to five days without water. Inadequate uh, fluid intake leads obviously to dehydration, which in turn leads to loads of noticeably bad things like constipation, tiredness, dry skin, bad breath and headaches. The real damage though comes from chronic dehydration, um, which has been linked to kidney damage, uh, blood pressure issues, uh, joint pain, digestive disorders, high cholesterol. Recently, links have also been suggested between chronic dehydration in the elderly and the onset of dementia. Uh, water is vital in nearly every function of your body, so please make sure that you're getting enough. So look out for signs of dehydration, please. And it turns out the best way to do this is to have a look at your wee. So before you flush, have a gander. No one will know. And if it's darker than a pale, pale yellow, then that is a sign that you probably need some more water. Uh, certain things like medication can change the color and the smell of your wee, so that might mislead you. Also, if you've had a lot of B2, uh, riboflavin, that can change it into an alarming radioactive, sort of lime green yellow, which I'm sure you've all seen. And obviously, that's not a good test either. But if you haven't done those things, Ideally, pale, pale yellow is what we're looking for. This is how rock and roll I am. I aim for one crystal clear we every day. Now that's show business. Your body's very clever, so it will send you a sign that you need more water. They can be joint pains, muscle pains, headaches, bad breath, lower back pain, loads of different things could be indications that you need more water, along with obviously your dark and smelly wee, which no one wants that. Ain't nobody got time for that. 
So I'm thinking, well, my body will tell me I'm thirsty and I'll have a drink. Easy, right? Yeah, obvs, but you have to bear in mind the fact, it turns out, that your body doesn't tell you you're thirsty until quite a long time after it actually needs the water. And also it's rather cavalier about the way it distinguishes between you being hungry and thirsty. The signals it sends are the same, which is really rather confusing, isn't it? So sometimes when you feel hungry, you might actually be thirsty. So they say, they, the experts say, that if you then have a glass of water and wait 20 minutes, if you're still hungry, then you are always hungry. Talking of experts, they have recently concluded the following that there is no set requirement of water per day, and as every individual has different water consumption requirements, it is difficult to apply a general rule. You should drink when you're thirsty. Right, great. Thanks for that. That's awesome, experts. Well, we just figured that out earlier on in this video, so we're like experts then, right? Also, some of these cuddly experts say that one way you can estimate the amount of water you should drink is to take your weight in pounds and cut the number in half. And that gives you the number of fluid ounces you should drink. So if you're 160 pounds, then it's 80 fluid ounces of water or some liquid. Hmm. Sounds a bit vague to me. And as for the ubiquitous eight glasses a day theory, some other experts not the cuddly ones this time, I think more frowny ones. They say that a glass is half a pint. That's 285 mils. Uh, so that would, mean, that would mean around two to two and a half liters a day. But this estimate, however, assumes that your environment is normally cool, that you're about 150 pounds, that's about 68 kilograms, or I think that's about 10 and a half stone in old money and exercise in some form, that's about 20 minutes a day. Oh, and by the way, men and women need different amounts. See, that's not a cuddly, embraceable fact. That's a generalized statistical fact. That's no good to anyone. Experts. We're also warned by experts, the frowny ones again, I believe, not the cuddly ones, that at least 20% of the water that you need comes from the food you eat. So that's mostly fruit and veg, obviously. I don't think the dairy milk counts. I'll check though, because that'd be quite handy, wouldn't it? But I have a feeling no. And the rest comes from what you drink, obviously. So the best thing to do, best thing to drink, water. So what have we learned? We've learned that experts don't really know much. That's what we've learned, isn't it, frankly? So what are we gonna do? Well, I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go with the whole we thing. I know that sounds a bit weird, but it just does seem to be the best gauge. Have a look, see, yeah, clear, hooray, rock and roll. I think that's the best way, frankly. All the rest of it is too complicated. So if you do see me peering into a toilet, then don't judge me. I'm just looking at my wee. Doesn't make me a bad person. It is quite weird, actually. And anyway, you shouldn't be there if I'm looking anyway, should you? So you choose what you're gonna do, and let me know how it works. And in another video, the next one, whichever way they come. Um, I'm going to look at what kind of water, what sort of fluids, what's the best thing to have, whether tap water, bottle water. I don't think beer counts, by the way. See you then.